20 degrees up here. What an interesting night that was. So we got a cold front coming through. <clears throat> it's been really windy. And uh, <laughs> so I'm sitting out here by a fire last night after uh, after that awesome dinner. And the wind's howling through the trees. And I keep hearing this howling sound. Now I have wolves up here. I have a pack of coyotes that hang around here. And I'm familiar with those hounds, sounds, you know. But uh, um, this was a different, different kind of howl. Uh, it's I, I'm pretty sure. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure it was a Bigfoot. It sounded just like a Bigfoot. I'm sure you've all heard what a Bigfoot sounds like, or a Yeti, when it's howling. I mean, who hasn't heard that, right? So, um, that's what it sounded like. I mean, it was just like a weird howling sound. But I couldn't determine, because it was so windy, I couldn't really isolate. Well, I knew it was coming from over there. And over there is nothing but wilderness. <clears throat> straight down out of the, out of Michigan and then straight down out of Canada. So, I'm positive it was a Yeti. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, so that was weird. Uh, just having a pipe and coffee this morning. Um, uh, one of my favorite pipe tobacco blends is kind of like a maple syrup uh, flavored blend. I really love the stuff. Yeah, I'll have a little bit of that this morning with some coffee. So anyway, I'm out here by the fire last night. Wind's whipping through the trees. All of a sudden I hear crack, 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 crack. Boom. <laughs> I'm like, holy, and it was right here. I'm like, holy crap, that's a big tree that just came down. And the way it sounded when it landed, could have made a smacking sound. And I heard a popping sound. I'm like, oh no. I bet you that thing fell across the road. And now I can't get out of here. I'll have to, uh, get a chainsaw out and cut it up right but if a tree falls across the road right behind me here down the hill there's a set of power lines that goes right along that road I'm like oh no I'll bet it took out the power lines sure enough fell right across the lines pulled the lines out of the transformer I jumped in the Jeep I ran down the road to take a look Yep, there's live power lines laid in the road. So that's just awesome. Not only that, but it's dry up here. I mean, it's not, there's, there's not a burning van or nothing, but it's, it's dry and it's windy. I'm like, yeah, let's have some power lines arcing around on the road, starting this woods on fire. But I didn't see any sparking or arcing or anything like you see on TV where <laughs> wires whipping around and it looks like a blowtorch. No, that doesn't happen. Um, I think now they've, they've put safety devices into transformers that if, if a line gets severed or ripped out of it, it automatically just cuts the power. <laughs> Because the wire was just laying in the road all coiled up, not doing anything. But that meant power was out. Now, when the power goes out up here, I mean, the power will go out up here if an owl farts. All it takes is a branch falling on the wire. So, I'm like, oh, great. 
that power is not going to be restored for a long time and it's supposed to get cold and I have electric heat camper so this is just going to be uh, pretty close to like hot tent camping with a little tiny wood stove that only gives you a fire for three hours <clears throat> so I'm going to be bundling up in sleeping bags and whatnot light by candles and stuff thank god I I found a big box of uh, candles that somebody was throwing away once and I and I grabbed that and said oh that'll be good for up north for emergency so yeah I fired up a bunch of candles and but prior to that I drove out to the road because I saw people coming down the road here and then the trees laying across the road and they couldn't go so they would stop and then they back up the hill and so I drove out there once when a guy was down there and uh, we got to talking and uh, I asked him you know I'm like do you know who to contact and everything and he's like yeah I'll take care of it so he apparently went and made a phone call And within 30 minutes, there was a utility truck down in the hill, down in the valley. And they were working on it. <clears throat> and about an hour later, the lights came back on. <coughs> so I, I had heat. Lights came back on around 11 o'clock. I had heat last night. So I slept pretty good. Except my air mattress has a leak. And by morning, it's flat. And... I can't sleep flat on my back because then I have back problems and so yeah but all in all it wasn't too bad but it was a little bit of adventure this morning it's brisk out here I got turkeys pretty close I'd say probably 100 yards away there's some turkeys around here somewhere goblin so, So yeah, the plan this morning, I'm not even going to make breakfast. Um, I'll get this water here in the kettle going. I'll do some dishes. And uh, oh, I hate rabbits. Supposedly, that's what you say when the smoke is blowing in your eyes. I hate rabbits. And then the smoke goes away. See? See how that works? smoke's gone so you learned a couple things today I hate rabbits saying that and the smoke will blow away and there indeed are yetis and Bigfoots out there and uh, they're quite common and um, they make a weird howling noise So I think I'll button up camp and load up and get out of here and head down south to my uh, secret private lake, slide the raft in and see if I can't uh, get into some of those pre-spawn crappies and bluegills and bass. I went and checked out the lake last week and it's really weird because the panfish should not be spawning now. They usually spawn in June. Um, they shouldn't even be in pre-spawn mode going in and making beds or anything like that because water's still too cold. But on this particular lake, the water's really dark and the lake is small. And uh, that darker water warms up faster. So I think that's what's doing it. But I was with the landowner uh, and we went down to the water's edge and we were looking and, and in the shallows, I mean, like a foot of water, it was just boiling. I mean, just whoosh, and just huge schools of bluegills would take off. So he went fishing uh, last week out there and he says he did pretty well. And he's got 10 inch bluegills in this lake. So I'm pretty stoked should get into some action and if the wind stays down I'll be able to actually use a flyer I hate rabbits 
I hate rabbits. So we've established that doesn't always work. Um, so I brought fly rods along, but if it's super windy like this, I'm gonna struggle. But we'll see what happens. So I'm pretty excited. I'll do that for a couple hours. And then I got another plumbing side job I got to do on the way home. And uh, I'll do that in the afternoon. And then I'll head her back. So stay along if you're interested. And uh, we'll see if we can get into some fish. There's the Yeti. He's right. Oh, no. It's just a dead tree.